good morning is that for a person like me? I said, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Goddamn, FX is here. That's not enough to make you excited. You don't have an erection yet? We'll find out in a minute. Um, so, um, I found out the kid doesn't speak English. And she remembers me from the boat. She goes, that's the boat man. <laughs> I'm the boat man. Yeah. I'm the man on the boat. So, I'm Big Easy. I'll be introducing speakers and stuff, trying to keep things going up on the stage. And my, my Uncle Phil. And some other people. And, and some other on and all the And Alex. I don't know where is Alex. Alex, so, is, he was up there last time I checked. Uh, he's going to come in. And Tad will be the, he's the boat man man. He's the captain of the boat. So, um, Phil, once again, we're going to kick off Hekito, right? Yep. And did you want to say any words? I was like, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, it's time for the keynote. And um, a man who probably doesn't need much introduction, FX, will do the keynote with Jessica. Jessica. And before anything? And before anything, happy birthday. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jessica. Thank you. Cool. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, I'm FX. And, yeah, um, we both um, have the pleasure to give you the keynote um, on her birthday. Um, uh, together with another thing that has birthday today, which uh, we know as the internet, right? Um, 1969, uh, there was the first ARPANET packet switch connection um, between two computers. And um, yeah, the fun part actually is uh, with this story that um, you know, it was um, two universities in the United States. And so they had a first packet switch connection and then we're on a you know, circuit switch connection, basically on a phone, uh, to figure out where, if it's working. So they try to log into the other computer. So they type an L, works, yay. Type an O, works, yay. Type a G, login process on the other side crashes. The login process running as root. So we basically, uh, in, in today's terms, that will be a remote exploit or a cyber attack. Right? So basically we had cyber war before we had cyber. Um, and so this um, gets us into um, what we want to talk about. Um, basically, what is and what isn't. So, you know, IDS isn't. <laughs> um, um, IPS will not protect you. <laughs> and bug bounties uh, will actually not secure your software. And security software is actually the worst thing you can do. Uh, because, you know, uh, don't pile broken stuff on broken stuff. Uh, so we will cover a little bit of what works and what doesn't. And so this is us, <laughs> uh, the bio bit, and the hacker. <laughs> yeah, we sometimes argue, but then Sometimes we agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is more for a reference. <laughs> so, um, life is hacking, and hacking is life. Uh, basically, um, it is not all about computers those days, um, because basically hacking is our, our life, not just for us, but um, what people call cyber. Oh, by the way, cyber is a drinking game. Every time you say cyber, you have to drink. <laughs> this is why I love doing international policy conferences, because I have to say cyber a lot. <laughs> 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 so, um, what is hacking, right? Um, is it a term that we use for criminal activity? 
um, like it is used in media mostly. So when evil people break into computer systems. Um, or is it maybe a term that at one time was used at the um, toil or tech model railroad club at the MIT for people that were actually able to control their trains because they have little switch keys there, uh, tick, 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 uh, control it in a way that um, you know they don't crash into each other. This is actually where the term comes from. Um, is it hacking when you steal a lot of data that um, you have sworn about five different oaths to protect and then burn it on a CD and, and write Lady Gaga on it? and then take it to a tour through China and Russia. <laughs> um, nah, not really, not in my world. Um, or, you know, is it just, <laughs> what the hell? Um, or, you know, uh, is it just your, your ego? Um, are you, <laughs> basically, are you doing it for the ego and then uh, try to make it the noble cause or do you have a noble cause in um, your ego feeds of the fact that you're doing something good? That, in fact, is for you to decide. Um, but from my point of view, hacking is mostly about what's the goal? I mean, the primary goal of hacking is because we can. <laughs> That's basically why you do it, right? Um, but um, if you happen to can, if it actually happened to work, then it's an interesting question, and it's a question that is worth considering. Uh, what are you doing with the results? So um, a couple of um, epi <laughs> fails um, that um, you know I'm really pissed off about mm, because you know people this this technology world is not really old, right? But, you know, uh, there have been people that actually know what they do. There have been people that actually think about what they do. So um, reinventing the wheel sometimes is cool, sometimes it's not. Uh, but at least check out the wheels before, right? Maybe they were already round and cool and, you know, uh, and um, what is definitely not the right thing to do is reinventing stuff for the purpose of reinventing it, right? So it um, pisses me off, you know, right? We're running Unix systems for a reason, because people know how to operate Unix. So if you're the guy who writes uh, the syslog daemon, then you should not just because your ass feels like it, uh, change the configuration syntax and then for bonus points actually uh, name it after yourself, which actually recently happened with rsyslog d. Um, you don't understand what a technology is for. Um, I, I freak out every time I see something like a home router, um, where when you say new to configuration, uh, it, it thinks that a captcha will be a really good way to prove that the person I actually wanted to change the configuration. Uh, wait a minute. What was CAPTCHA standing for? It's a Turing test. Damn it. Um, and you know, I think those people, they, they probably also went to the curriculum in the university and then Turing test. I take that one. Um, <laughs> and they probably failed it. And you know, uh, I have no words for the stupidity of uh, replacing a fundamental design part of an operating system by something like System D. Uh, I mean, Leonard, go die in a fire. Uh, the only reason you're doing that is because Red Hat uses you to monopolize the Linux market. That's all. Damn it. So, <laughs> um, that's the thing. Uh, you have to figure out why you do it and what you do with it. Uh, the people around will actually judge you, and um, sometime in your life you have to look back at it, and you know your your consciousness might actually never shut up. Uh, pro tip: drinking a lot makes it shut up a short time. <laughs> Works. <laughs> so, uh, who cares about what you actually think? Yeah, the people around you. I mentioned those. So. What about your friends? So um, uh, back in the days, you know, when I was young and beautiful, um, today I'm just end. 
um, it used to be about the skills, right? So we were hacking uh, for the skills and the stuff, and then it was a little bit about fame. I mean, posting on Backtrack, posting all day on Backtrack was cool. Huh? You remember that, Big Easy? <laughs> you remember what an all day is? <laughs> um, but then, you know, fame equaled money, because suddenly, you know, it started with the, uh, what was it, the, the security vacation club, right? Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm not a carrying member, actually. Um, and, well, then the military came and the secret services and they wanted all the old days and now it's about money. So basically, either your friends are lamers or they're your competition now. What about your employer? So, having a hacker in a team uh, was rare. Um, used to be rare. It was something. Status. Um, then, you know, it became a requirement. <laughs> Uh, then regulation came in, then it became a liability uh, because suddenly uh, you're risking your employer's job when you say, look, this, this machine is not only not compliant, it's also owned by me. And, you know, you're risking your boss's job. That's, you know, times change. Let's say, okay, your boss fired you. <laughs> uh, now you're self-employed. Cyber, um, and you know that, that was something that it was something useful for a time. So you know, hackers got hired, then became a hired annoyance um, because people realized that you know when you do, for example, you do product security. Yay! Um, look at Microsoft, right? Um, they managed to get their stuff halfway straight. Um, and basically lost all the market share in the process. Um, so, um, you know, people don't buy computers because they're more secure than the other computers, because the other computers have a fruit on them. Mm. Um, so basically, uh, nowadays when you do product security um, the way we used to do that, um, like, you know, testing, pen testing, stuff like that, you're basically just reducing everyone's bonus pay. Hmm, not so useful. How about governments? So, you know, having a hacker in your basement <laughs> was a privilege for governments for a while. Um, but then they became a globalized resource, right? There's um, uh, people that live in Asia, <laughs> um, were born in South, um, South Africa, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, you can buy good weaponized exploits all around the world. So it became a commodity. And then the prices became known, and well, now basically you're just a very inefficient bug bounty program. In today's world, we're increasingly facing um, this position that, you know what, um, you hackers, you don't deliver solutions. All you ever deliver, if any, is more problems. Um, and that's affecting real people's iPhones, right? And, and they want a Facebook, and they want to, uh, you know, uh, just have a happy, exposed cyber life. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're facing something that is a little bit, um, looks a little bit like the dark ages of hacking. So, you know, we bring your criminal history and some fingerprints and uh, your CISSP, uh, also known as Clown Incapable of System and Software Protection. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I am CISSP. <laughs> um, and so what is it? If we want to actually deliver solutions, the cure or secure or whatever, uh, we should look how that worked in the history. Because history repeats because humans uh, stay stupid. Um, and uh, we've seen all this before. Because for the people outside, what we do is sorcery, witchcraft, black magic. This is why we think we're cool and we wear black all the time. He. Um, so, but how does that look like? Think of the medieval times. Um, 
was it you know were they all convinced of the narrative of the church which you know today is probably just the media it's the same thing right or were people actually uh, not convinced but actually just scared and didn't want to get tortured and you know ripped in pieces and burned and stuff like that <laughs> and so that's why they didn't uh, practice more sorcery and witchcraft um, probably it was the second um there's a lot of um, knowledge that I think actually um, disappeared over the times. And um, yeah, the, the question is, how much is it worth uh, turning on stage, basically, right? So here's some examples that we, um, we know from the past. Um, having the slightest success in, in fighting the plague um, simply by washing your hands after you, you know, burn to death and not kiss to death, it will actually get you burned on state. Um, healing wounds um, or fevers, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, healing someone where the family already paid for the funeral, <laughs> got you burned. Uh, or, <clears throat> you know, delivering a baby so that the wife doesn't die in the process occasionally got you burned. Um, so this is very similar to uh, some of the cyber regulation uh, that we're having today, right? Um, but still, is, it, is the hard way worth it? Right? Um, is, is seeking knowledge and truth um, something that you should do? Or should you actually like look for, for some cult that provides you with an easy access? exit um like i don't know um, do you read um let's say laws yourself or um, um do you just follow the crowd that um, goes snowden 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 in um you know evil nsa evil nsa they hacked the chinese pro tip you should actually look at the funding law um of the nsa it actually, the second, the first line says, I'm the president and I'm starting the NSA. The second line says, heck everyone, especially the Chinese, basically. <laughs> and I mean, that was still written on a typewriter. Um, so, the, the, well, it's their job. Um, and, you know, we have more parallels to the, um, to the medieval times, right? So, uh, religious healthcare, um, basically, if you have a situation where knowledge is needed um, and deep knowledge is needed, but there is a short supply of people that actually know what they're talking about. Uh, medicine in the medieval times, computer security today, right? Uh, what happens is the rest of the market is filled with charlatans. Lots of them. Uh, many of them sell yellow boxes. <laughs> um, and <laughs> Basically, um, the, the vacuum is just filled because there's people with a demand and money. And you know, if you run around with a bunch of money and say, "Help me, help me," uh, you will find um, a lot of people that will say, "Give me the money, I help you," and have no fucking idea what they talk about. Um, and so, because like our computer security, especially the defense side, is a lot like medicine uh, back in in the medieval times because. So they have the situation where someone have probably an infection from you know blood infection, and so cutting it open and bleeding him out has worked once, maybe twice. And so they ran around and like, oh, um, you have cancer, bleeding. Uh, you have a cold, bleeding. <laughs> so basically, the answer to everything was bleeding. Today we call that antivirus and updates, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it really is the same thing. Um, and, 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 you know, um, because everyone was doing antivirus and updates, bleeding, uh, they outlawed reverse engineering. <laughs> this is why, why there was no anatomy, because, you know, the dead, you, you could not cut them open and find out how does the human look inside. So they had all kinds of funny theories how the human looks inside, uh, because, well, do you only... Uh, way to heal him was bleeding, and that's exactly what we're doing here, right? Because we're making so much nice money with antivirus and updates and stuff like that, uh, so we better just outlaw reverse engineering. 
Um, and also, um, magic potions, right? Um, everyone, you know, here, drink this magic potion, and it helps you. Um, you have to realize that homeopathic uh, medicine is coming back. Like the, the, our health system in, in Germany actually pays for that, literally. You know what you, what you give a, a homeopathy fan uh, for birthday? It's an empty box of uh, chocolates because it has the memory of the chocolates in there. <laughs> uh, I what? Uh, uh, most of you know the movie. Um, basically what happens is, you know, if you're not doing real research um, to heal people, then they die. If you're not doing real research to secure computers, bah, then they get hacked. So, you know, um, we have the situation today. Eh? The Pasteur and Koch were made fun um, of because they said there's little invisible things, bacteria. It, in, they, they infect people and then the doctors go like, no, why will I need to wash my hands after one operation to the next, right? And they were made fun of because they're invisible. Uh, I mean, talk to talk to a software developer as at SAP or Oracle um, about Turing completeness. <laughs> uh, they do the same thing, you know. What Turing machines? No, no, we we don't have a library called that. Um, I mean, uh, we have situations like that um, today. Um, so Marie Curie, for example, you know, the only person, and a female, by the way. Uh, that won two Nobel Prizes in two different categories, but she, she herself did not insist that getting blind, gray, dying, rotting away had anything to do with the radioactive material that she was carrying in her pocket. Okay, you know, the, the, even Trinity tests, like the nuclear weapon, nuclear bomb test, uh, they had a group, they had a battle unit of people walking up 400 meters to ground zero and check it out. I mean, um, you know, in, in the Cold War, there was little um, TV shows for kids uh, with a song. If you see the flesh, duck and cover, I mean, it's the same thing. You know, if you hear the hackers update and AV, I mean, ugh, we have computer professors that argue with me. Um, when they say, of course, we, can, we have a regular expression that protects us from all SQL injections. Hello? Chomsky? Hierarchy? Whatever? <laughs> uh, we actually <laughs> wear t-shirts where we can explain the Chomsky hierarchy to you. So, you know, how about... Yeah, yeah. have you... Uh, did you show off? Yep. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, where the tech does not come from. Um, this is my, my favorite story from my international policy. Um, I do international policy uh, events as a hobby. I'm the only hobbyist with the lobbyists, which they hate. Um, and so at one point, a senior policymaker, British, um, and said, uh, well, they're, they're going to regulate all the hacking stuff at the ISPs. And <laughs> someone said, how about you talk to the companies first? You know, they, they run the internet. And he's like, yeah, I did that. I talked to all four. And I'm like, all four what? And he looks at me like, I have no idea. And, and boldly explains to me that, man, you don't know nothing. Microsoft makes the operating system. Google makes search. Facebook makes social and semantic makes secure. Those are the people that actually write our international regulation. So will the market solve that problem? Will the market make secure computers? Bullshit, no, <laughs> because people expect the computers to be secure because they are told so. And the same is with medicine and bio research. Will the market make, make medicine on some people need it? No. If you have a friend that has um, a rare type of cancer, talk to them, ask them if they get medicine. Uh -uh. Doesn't pay off. Um, so the big companies will not do the research. So who is doing the research? At the end of the day, it's mostly hackers. Uh, because, you know, otherwise um, you're just getting the capitalism uh, thing. I'm from East Germany, so I had the questionable pleasure of knowing both systems. And um, 
uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, of the uh, statement, capitalism didn't win it, just it was left over. Uh, so um, that's, that's really the case, you know, the, whoever bullshitted the people best uh, survived. And then, you know, if there's only one, then you won. Um, basically, because all systems, um, or both systems actually were a championship in champion management, like champignons, like the little uh, mushrooms, because uh, how do you manage champignons? Keep them in the dark and feed them shit. This is how you do that. <laughs> So, and because nobody else does anything, uh, hackers need to do it. So, and this is why, whoops, this lady is hiding behind me. <laughs> um, this is why we, didn't, instead of just, you know, preaching stuff to you, we actually wanted to deliver some knowledge as well. And um, so on a, on a weekend, while drinking um, at her place, we were actually, uh, uh, talking about uh, what is the computing power of a cell, right? Like a cell, a human body cell, whatever. And so let's talk about um, the Turing completeness of biological cells. Lady Jessica. Thank you very much. So basically, was what we have been asking ourselves is what type of an automaton is a cell? Automata, you will for sure know that, is the Greek word for me. It means self-acting. So a, a living cell is defined by being capable of um, sustaining herself. It's a female, of course. Uh, <laughs> and um, to proliferate. There is a big discussion still going on in academia, like, oh, okay, is a virus a cell, or is it only if it can divide by itself? Because a virus needs a host. A bacterial cell, for example, doesn't need a host. A bacterial cell can divide by Herself. In other words, what Chomsky hierarchy grammar type is used for encoding to DNA. And here we start to explain you a little bit about the bio part. So, DNA, you know that deoxyribonucleic acid is what makes us. That's the tape. This, this is how you tell has no high school degree, has a diploma. <laughs> <laughs> she can say words like that. So, DNA. That's your part. Well, to, to just trans or translate. To yeah, so, our so what, we, what we try to do here is translate uh, the biohacking and DNA uh, to hackers. So basically, um, the, the, the DNA you can think of, and, and I learned this all from her, and, and this is the real fun part, um, because like, I get this explained and then I have recognition uh, and say, like, oh, I know this. So when you look at the DNA, it actually is a basically a bunch of frames within frames within packets. It's a PCAP file. Basically, someone pressed, you know, um, TCP dump um, and, and TCP dump the W. And um, so when you jerk off, it's basically a CD full of a PCAP file. Uh, that's the amount of data you have flying around. Actually, half of it because you know it's incomplete. Kind of. Um, so we have this huge piece of DNA, more or less huge, depending on what type of cell you look at. Um, for example, a bacterium has like uh, 4,000 kilo bases. That's like 4,000 kilo bases of information on this tape. And the intracellular machinery somehow has to be able to cope with that. So to unpack it unzip it uh, to get to the information, translate it um, into usable things like a protein, an enzyme, so that, for example, something can get out of the cell. And we, and we start with the assumption that whoever made that, may this be nature or evolution or whatever deity creator you have, uh, knew about Langsec, does not work at Oracle or SAP, so they will actually use the right type of automaton to parse the shit, right? Exactly. And while we were thinking about all of that, we thought to ourselves, can we somehow show that? So, cells operate on DNA in two distinct ways. That's very, very important. One operation is copy the DNA when the, when the cell wants to divide and proliferate. Basically what you do with porn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that's in copy. <laughs> 
And uh, the second operation is the execution. So it's, um, I need to get st stuff out of myself. I need a channel to the outside world. I need a protein, and that's the execution. So the DNA will be taken and being f yeah. transformed into, that, right? yeah, yeah, we, we, okay. Sorry, so I'm running away. <laughs> basically, think of, the because the cop this, this distinction is important. So the copy is basically a DD, right? Uh, when you do it from a disk, uh, floppy. <laughs> Um, and the execution, when you think of the PCAP file, is basically now you have a TCP dump dash R and you give it a BPF filter, like host uh, phenolate.de and ICMP. So you're extracting the part that you need. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Yeah, and one thing to note is these two processes have no direct causal link between each other. That's a very important feature. Okay, so coming back to copy DNA. <laughs> so you have your arbitrary cell, like, oh yeah, blah, it's a little bit boring, I need a neighbor, so ha, I proliferate. And the DNA needs to get copied then. And this process of being copied is inherent error prone. As every pro copy process is, right? I mean, if you remember, like, um, five, um, five inch, uh, five and a quarter inch floppies in winter. You had to, you know, put them under the shirt uh, so they don't get cold. And you know, the, as I said, yeah, the sound net 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 net. Ignore the board. <laughs> Continue, right? Uh, if you remember that. Um, so, a copy process is always, always error prone, no matter what they tell you. And basically, when you have a checksum mismatch, <laughs> that's called a mutation. Yeah, and do I have a time for just a little side story about mutation? When I was doing my diploma thesis, it took me three months to figure out that in my bloody gene product, I had a single point mutation and the whole stuff didn't work. Yes. Yep. One base exchange. Uh, Murphy's Law um, applies to biohacking as well. It's, it's just more, um, you know, uh, wet bullshit. <laughs> yep. So, uh, <laughs> For the copy part. <laughs> yeah, what, I, I, what you see here, I can, I can, I can remember that um, back in the VGA days. VGA copy, anyone remembers that? <laughs> I started using computers a little bit later than you guys probably. Um, and our, um, what do you call, what, what was that on the uh, original thing? I forgot it. The, what? The VGA, VGA copy. Yeah, what, for us it's called DNA polymerase. Remember that name, it's important. Basically, that's your copy program. So, coming to the second part, the execution. So now, what happens? Um, if, you, if you need something to get, you need to get the information from your DNA. What the cell will do, they have another polymerase, it's an RNA polymerase. It will go to the DNA and look for the sequence it needs, and like, ah, where are you, where are you, ah, here then it will attach to the, to the DNA and write a little transcript. So it will recode a specific subpart, a subpart, a subsequence of the DNA into another molecule called the messenger RNA. And this is what brings the message to the second parts in the cells so to then proceed. The recoding you can, you can think of is basically, you know, you, you, download, um, you download an uh, MPEG porn and you transcode it into an AVI. Uh, or in, in coding terms, basically, this is like the preprocessor in C, right? GCC E. So basically, uh, all the include, blah, blah, all your defines, all the macros, like, you know, the long macro thingies are resolved. And you still get C code, um, but, you know, it's now all in one file. Okay, but that's not all we need. We also need, um, and I'll just make a spoiler, we need some kind of a library. And that's called the tRNA. The tRNAs are also transcribed from the DNA by another RNA polymerase. I'm using a lot of this RNA DNA thing, so... Uh, Drives me nuts. <laughs> I know. Um, and all this together will then come to the next step. But this tooling, that's very important because these libraries are needed for the third step. But yeah. So uh, th basically, it's it's like bootstrapping uh, your glibc, right? So uh, you download the sources of glibc, and then 
you end up with a metric ton of .o files and um, yeah, uh, the stuff um, in system D. <laughs> okay, then we come to the third step. And I'm sorry, I have to introduce another word to you. It's called a ribosome. A ribosome will... Is a linker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it will attach to the tRNA, uh, sorry, to the mRNA. I'm looking at the slide. To the mRNA, of course. And look what's, what's on the mRNA. And depending on that, matches the code the base pairs, the, DNA, the, the, the genetic code, and look in, in the cell matrix like, oh, I need, I need this tRNA, and then I mean this one. So looking up in the library, what it, what it needs. And this, in the end, because to this tRNA is also attached, you have your amino acids, which eventually make up the protein you need. And that, that will make your whole gene product. The answer. Well, it could be an answer, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, <laughs> Uh, this slide, uh, like when we when we made this slide, we realized that uh, this is uh, worth, um, let's say, two semesters of bioinformatics. Um, <laughs> because find someone, find a bioinformatic guy that can explain that. Um, so yeah, basically, so, what it returns. <laughs> what it returns is something that if you. Uh, okay, so but this is the visual, visualization of um, X-ray data from, and you know that already, from a polymerase. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have your protein, you can crystallize it and then X-ray it, and then you like analyze the data, and this is the picture you can get, and it's an undebuggable, executable spaghetti spag code. Yeah, uh, like uh, the apple kernel. <laughs> uh, so um, basically, um, this. Um, yeah, think of that as IDA, like, um, as if you will take IDA and look at something, right? <laughs> um, so, what coming back to Turing the Turing machines. machines. What is a Turing machine? Um, <laughs> that's an old um, German movie classic. Um, so, what does it consist of? We have a tape, right? Yes, that's in our case the DNA, for right. example. So, we need a hat. Uh, no, not this, but uh, something to read and write on the tape. Well, let's see about the write. But read, we just covered. Yes, read, we already covered. Write, to some extent, also. We also need a stage register. Yep, um, and memory cell here does not refer to bio cell, but like register, like EAX. Like in an automaton. And we also need the instructions. That's our DNA code. Basically, an instruction table, right? Uh, what, what operations do we have? And we need at least four, because to show Turing completeness, um, you know, a Turing machine has a stop signal, right? A stop uh, instruction. However, that is not needed for the Turing completeness proof, because a Turing machine that does not end uh, is also a Turing machine. Um, and yeah. if the stop is missing, well, if they stop it missing, it can turn to cancer, for example. Because the cell will not stop proliferating, or your DNA is... No, your protein is broken because it will just run. It continues to run on the DNA. Yep. Um, think of it as LibreOffice. <laughs> it's broken and it just eats all the CPU. <laughs> so. Uh, but we, uh, it turned out that we're actually pushing the envelopes here. Um, so, what did we find? Well, a Turing machine is actually not required to perform any useful action in the meaning of doing work. And probably some of you know that, and I can speak for myself from past experience <laughs> compared to your CEO. <laughs> yep. There is also no requirement for it to be too deterministic. And the individual <laughs> functions are not in no way required to be implemented together. Read, yep. write. So uh, the read and write hat, because the Turing machine is a thought model, right? The read and write hat, um, nobody says that we don't have, can have a read and a write hat, right? Yes. And to show Turing completeness, you don't have to, um, you have to only show that a Turing machine exists. You don't need to have it. Think of patents, right? <laughs> so you file a patent, uh, nobody says bring the machine and show me that it works. 
uh, you just file a patent. Um, there is there's a nice library of people that actually patented uh, perpetual mobilis uh, because they didn't realize that they have perpetual uh, perpetual motion uh, as a pre requirement for their stuff to work that they patented. Amazon patented uh, um, buying stuff with a click. Whatever. So, uh, zero percent complete. <laughs> we're looking for our primitives, right? We're we're trying to build a Turing machine out of a cell. <sighs> read and <No>. forward. <laughs> Sorry. <Go ahead. laughs> First step: read and forward. So the copy process is already incremental. We already have that feature, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. It will just like it will move forward forever until it falls off or is tired and oh no, has a movie to go to or whatever. <laughs> And um, what the DNA also features is blanking out blocks of codes. And you may have heard that there is also a huge discussion going on between things called introns and exons. Exons are the things that what we know today actually code for something. So when you have a part of the DNA that's called an exon, it will lead to a gene product. The introns, however, is what we call to date garbage. But is it really garbage? No, it is not. And there is a lot of re research going on to, to, to see what this exactly is. Is it like a regulation thing? And regulation meaning not in the way of government regulation, but to... Control. Thank you. Control. <laughs> <laughs> it's called regulators in our labs. That's the problem. <laughs> the thing is, basically, the easiest way to think of it is uh, introns is... Uh, exons is if def and introns is if def, right? So you basically if def code out um, or comment it out if you want, right? Um, the, the interesting thing is because those those two processes, copy and execute, are separate. All shit is copied all the time. So um, you know we we have a basically we have the effect of let's say. It's a file system. Remember when you copy disks and then suddenly on MS-DOS you had a like, floppy disk and it had a gigabyte sized file and you couldn't delete it because you fucked up your FAT? There was a mutation in the copy process um, at the point where the FAT was and here goes your file system. So um, we have that part. Now we're 25% complete already. Now we have forward operation. Next. So the branch forward. So these introns, they are already a branch forward mechanism in a way that I think you can explain way better than I do. Yeah, well, basically it is, it is again, the file system thingy, right? When you, when you copy a, fi uh, a file from one thing to the other, the file system tells you which blocks on a disk uh, con um, constitute this file, right? So. Um, this is basically a conditional copy, right? So, um, on the on the other, um, yeah. Uh, so, if you, for example, if you modify the file system again, we have a mutation while we copy our porn, and you know our porn is in a file system, MP4, AVI, there are file systems, there are container formats. Um, so we have a mutation. There's a bit flip somewhere um, in our porn movie, and. Um, so suddenly the tits are pink uh, or blue. <laughs> um, so uh, that um, and, and in the DNA, we, we also have a signal. You know, it's like um, like with packets. You need to know where the packet starts. And this is um, the donor, right? The, right, the right. start marker. Yes. And if you look at packet and packet um, attacks from um, Travis Goodspeed, for example, um, this is exactly that. You have a start sequence and you have an inline parsing. And when the start sequence is missing, then boom, you have two packets. Because uh, two packets made one, where one made two packets. Right. And uh, this, the, the last bullet point on this table is somewhat related to what I explained earlier when the DNA is transcribed into mRNA. Because that is the process before the mRNA is ready to, to be used to, to build the protein where these introns are like removed. And this is where an error can occur. For example, if you're a start marker where the DNA or where the, where the polymerase knows, here is an intron, this is not actually a coding sequence that needs to be removed. And this is the part where it can go wrong. And this is where we have the branch forward. Yep, because now we can basically conditionally branch forward. 
So we're fifty percent complete. Yay! <laughs> I know you guys are hoping that um, in five slides you can go, right? <laughs> because we're making progress. I'm getting. Um, thank you. Um, so, but now, um, I mean, of course, uh, biologists have looked at that, and um, because the the process is forward, and we need branch backwards and stuff, they decided. There is actually there. There have been some projects going on to prove Turing completeness of cells, but they kind of failed at. Hmm. Okay, we have the forward branch, but what about the backward thing? And they were like, "Okay, this is the end, my friend." This is the end, my friend. So, <laughs> and this is sorry, where the important thing or one important thing of today's talk starts: bring in the hackers, team up, and yep. this is without FX. I fun. would never have understood that. <laughs> have fun, because you know it's like hacking. Uh, when you, you know, um, um, we don't we don't need to own every computer in the network. How about we own one? <laughs> uh, assume it's a Windows network, and um, I mean we're probably good to go. Uh, uh, with the Linux network nowadays, the same. It's so basically in the same with processes, right? Um, uh, when you you know when you brute force an offset uh, with an exploit with a remote exploit you fire bar crashes but then in comes inetd oh no ah that doesn't work anymore system d would uh, fail but um, so uh, let's say it's Apache or stuff you know um, it restarts the processes and you have multiple attempts so basically the same here how about we only need one Turing machine we only need one to find right. Uh, either, you know, um, you can't argue with a root shell or the absence of one. So, you know, as long as we get one root shell, we're good. Um, think of fuzzing. I mean, fuzzing is the most stupid. Um, everyone who has never read basic introduction to software testing and knows what worst case boundary testing is calls it fuzzing uh, because it's a subset of worst case boundary testing. However, if it gives you a crash that Google pays you $60,000 for, hey, here you go. So basically, let's fuzz. And very important, cells enjoy division. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> you will see. Um, another important thing that comes in here, um, what we need to introduce, is the mutation rate, or so-called error rate. Because as that's we the fuzzing. <laughs> we already said, yeah, that's the fuzzing. Um, remember, when DNA gets copied, uh, errors occur. <laughs> I see Error by the surprise looks you have read the, cell, <laughs> the slide already. <laughs> so, let's take an example. An E. coli, that's a bacterium you have in your guts. Every one of you, millions and billions of them. And you need them to digest your food. And they divide at a rate of um, once every 1,200 uh, 1, seconds. So, are E. coli nom-nom bacteria? Yes, they are. <laughs> Nom, nom, nom. nom. <laughs> a human cell divides on an average rate um, every 24 hours. So every, every of your, of course your body cells also need to divide because your skin needs to be repaired. Everything in, in your, in your in, uh, approximately every seven years you will have a whole new set of, new, of cells. You will not be your, your previous self, literally, because you have different cells. How, it, else, how else would you get a new haircut or uh, get rid of the... Uh, of the, um, uh, let's say, uh, remains of drug enjoyment in your former hair. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said, keep that in mind. This process is not error prone. And both processes, on an average rate, they produce mutations like an 0.003 mutated base pairs per second. And I don't, I don't want, want to take over your part, but no, you no. The, the basic, basically, uh, the, we, what, we, what we have here is uh, the, the machinery comes with its own fuzzer, <laughs> uh, like Microsoft Word does, and uh, <laughs> save in one version, open in the other language version. Poof. So uh, basically, um, here it comes with its own fuzzer, and uh, this fuzzer has three times ten to the power of eleven write operations per second. While you're sitting here, every one of you, every second. That's quite some write performance, right? <laughs> Match that with a flash drive. <laughs> so 
Um, we have basically um, three to the power, um, um, three times the power of eleven uh, spray patches in the text segment per second, and then we run the code. Hmm. System D would not survive. <laughs> uh, the nice thing is, we only need one that actually works. The next important thing: branch backwards. And as far as we know. There is no backward branch operation in the copy or in the processing um, part of the I love this conference. DNA. Excellent Thank service. Thank you. <laughs> Cold beer in the morning. This is why we do <laughs> keynotes. We get to drink in the morning. <laughs> okay, so um, what, what we've seen um, earlier, these, these polymerases that uh, copy and translate the DNA, they can move forward, but they can't move backward. At least it hasn't been observed yet. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but we haven't seen it yet. So we have to consider it's not being done. So for the purpose of this discussion, let's consider that a missing forward branch is a limited backward branch operation. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. On Hakita. Cyber. <laughs> Cyber. <laughs> Good. So basically, um, this is basically the trick we do. It is like, okay, we don't have full backward branches, but a not happening forward branch um, that jumps into stuff, um, basically keeps running into stuff that wasn't there yet, is already a backward branch. If you have ever written, um, let me, uh, if you have ever reverse engineered Viri, um, you know, in virus writing, um, you often do that on variable size instruction sets, um, you jump in the middle of another instruction, at which point the decoding of the whole instruction stream changes, IDA goes crazy, uh, the analysts at Semantic don't understand it anymore, and you're good to go. Um, so <laughs> basically, this is, what is very commonly um, done in shellcode development, in uh, computer virus development. Um, so. What we do, uh, you know, um, okay, we, we don't have a universal backward branch, but we don't need a universal backward branch because x86 doesn't have a full universal backward branch if you have conditionals. You have to do dink, 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 dink. Uh, so we do that and basically get uh, to 95% completed. Why? Because we're waiting for the damn fuzzer to find the cell. Uh, to find these, this one version that actually runs our Turing, has our full Turing machine. Um, well, that um, is exactly how it works. So, uh, to quote Alan Turing himself, a broken clock is right twice a day. Exactly. Shows the right time. So, what we do, we got a lot of broken clocks. <laughs> Let's see, one will tell us the right time. Uh, and then we wait. And wait for the right error to occur. Error occurs. Uh, and we install Windows out of boredom. <laughs> <laughs> now we're out of porn. <laughs> At some point, you know, we, we learn, we learn uh, all of 4chan. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then, ba -ba! Point one. We have two incompleteness. Cool. Hey, where's the applause? <laughs> It's for you to tell something. <laughs> because, well, <laughs> it's getting better. Um, so the fun part is Alan Turing has, um, he called it differently, but it is in his honor called the Universal Turing Machine, UTM, uh, which is believed to not exist because it has infinite storage. Huh. What is infinite? So far, right, we, we have a Turing machine. We have a linear bounded non-deterministic Turing machine, to be correct. But we have DNA as a tape. So the question I was asking Lady Jessica here was, so how long can DNA wait? How, lo how long of a DNA can you have? Like, where's the theoretical boundary? And my answer was like, hmm, I don't know. I don't think there is a limitation. Let me see. And I couldn't find one. Of course, in living cells, you have a limitation because it has to fit into the envelope of the membrane of the cell. 
but in theoretically there is no biochemical limit because you can just like put together and add on base pairs and base pairs and, and you can go on forever. You can go, it, it, it doesn't matter. Right. So there's no limit. And now, you know, there's, there's the, the math uh, definition of infinite and then there's the definition of, you know, for all practical purposes, if I can't run out of storage, it's infinite. So it turns out that life is actually um, a universal Turing machine from our point of view. For all practical purposes, it's like the mathematician and the, uh, no, no. <laughs> the mathematician and the engineer um, shall uh, go to an experiment where there is a naked female um, on a bed, and then they're standing next to each other, and then the conductor says, "Well, every time I say step, you can shorten the distance halfway." And the mathematician goes like, "Yeah, fuck you. Um, that that never becomes zero," and leaves the room. And the engineer shouts after after him. For all practical purposes, I will have fun in five minutes. Um, so, you know, for all practical purposes, this is universal. Now, see, the nice thing about hacking is you're not wasting your time with publish or perish. Uh, basically, this, this is all the documentation you get uh, from us. Um, and, um, yeah, this is all of a paper we have. Uh, basically, we pirated it off Twitter. Uh, that's the abstract. Um, this is actually quite funny. This is the Boolean logic of hand waving. Uh, you know? <laughs> this is the proof you're looking for. Good. Uh, let's sum this up. So, um, QED, right? Uh, what, wait, sure. uh, what does that should have to do with computer security and why it still sucks? Well, um, as I said in the beginning, uh, there has been research, uh, there have been wheels invented, so uh, check on the wheels that have been invented if they're good enough for you, because then you can turn around and do cool shit, do something that hasn't been done. Uh, what we see today is every kid runs around thinks it's smarter than anyone else, the dimension system D, and um, the, you know, the reinvent something stupid. Uh, something simple, uh, like, you know, around 2000, everyone implemented his, his or her own web server, right? So uh, this doesn't get you anywhere. Yes, it makes money because venture capitalists understand something that, you know, is stupid and has invent been invented before because then they can also steal the business model from the people that have invented it or potentially steal a whole company. Um, <laughs> you know, if you... Uh, the, the, if you can't actually control your own compilers and interpreters um, like Oracle does, then you know you buy Sun so you can actually use Java. In, in the, the, the market will not regulate any of that because people don't buy what they want; people to buy what they're told to buy. Um, but keep in mind, people, we are not buying software, right? That's the whole. That's the whole issue. This is why we are sitting here because otherwise you could actually sue the fucking company for the vulnerability in the software and get a new one. Huh? Why can't you do that? Have you tried to return Microsoft Office because it didn't work on your computer, <laughs> um, or get a refund for your diploma thesis that was eaten by Libo Office? Nom 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 nom. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the, no, we can't because what we do, yeah. You know, this is very funny, but, you know, you know, thanks to Bill Gates. We're not buying software, we're buying licenses. A license basically is a allowance to execute an arbitrary byte stream that on a package promises to be a board processor. Uh, it allows you to execute their byte stream, their intellectual property, right? So you're, you're not having a product, you're having a license. Uh, did you notice there's only two industries in what that have no product liability? It's the drug cartels and it's the software industry. It's also the two industries in the world, the only two that call their customers users. <laughs> Think about that. And as long as we don't have any liability, 
Yeah, we have to invent cool shit uh, ourselves, right? Because we can't make them. We have to think about it. Where does tech not come from? I covered in the beginning. Where does tech come from? Cool technology comes from the military and from hackers. All kinds of hackers. You know, there have been hackers around for everything. The, because we can mode of hacking is the initial part. And this is why you need to think about what you do with it. And I mean, you should realize the, how much money uh, people pour into military people, for example, pour into quantum cryptography, uh, quantum computers especially, to break RSA. Did you notice the three times 10 to the power 11 computing power per second that uh, you're running around with? It basically, your body can easily on the fly crack RSA in very large key sizes instantaneously. Uh, and no research in that direction. So, you know, the, this is an example uh, two people bullshitting around just for the fun of it, thinking about something, thinking it through, working through it, and you know, to take the run from you. Um, and this, this is what hackers do. This is what hacker spaces bring. This is what conferences like this do. This is why you should be here. Yep. So, because. The, the thing, the thing is, we're seeing um, that um, you know, software is patented but has no liability, right? So we're feeding this reinvention wheel. So broken shit sells better. Good software sells only once. Oracle, over and over and over and over again, because they're hoping the next version will actually work. Um, now we're seeing the same thing with bio, right? Gene sequences—they they haven't been in, even invented by the people that find them. Um, even worse. I mean, they are around. And if this continues, it may happen one day if we don't prevent it, that dollar company has the idea to patent, I don't know, a part of your DNA. Then what? You walk around with it and uh, you wait, a patent? Wait a minute. You know what I just realized? Uh, we explained it. Mutation by a copy. So how about uh, like, um, down the future, you fuck, uh, you, get a, um, you get a son, and suddenly it turns out your son is patented because the mutation happened to run into one of the patented sequences. I mean, uh, this is why we actually um, have to look at stuff and, and stop developments like Monsanto. I'm mm -hmm. skipping over that a little bit. But, uh, Monsanto is exactly the oracle uh, of crop science. It's like, you know, broken shit sells year after year after year because it only, you know, grows once. Uh, in this is why full disclosure was important and continues to be important. Um, well, over time, <laughs> are you nervous? Oh, almost done. Um, so I, I don't think we need to. Almost You done. can go as long as you <laughs> need to. Does anybody have a problem with that? <laughs> OK. And there'll be time nope. for questions when he's done. <laughs> so uh, I know. Full disclosure came about because we have no liability with software, right? It was the only way to get Sun to actually turn off the fucking R log D. Um, it was the it was the bug even as a paying customer. The, hey, the, the, why can hackers just log into my machine as root? And is it crashing? No. Then we are not fixing it. So basically, <laughs> um, this this is how it worked. And so by making all of it public, um, well, you're putting people at risk, maybe, but um, it is important because unpublished means less administrators, more cells. Um, the, what we're looking at right now is we don't have a full disclosure debate in biohacking at all, right? So. Um, Either um, we start looking at our world, not just bio, everything um, is we need to make knowledge, we hackers need to make knowledge public in order so it's not monopolized somewhere else, right? Um, the, I asked Jessica 
if there's any reverse engineering, for example, of Monsanto uh, products and code. Nope. There is none. It's all patented. You can't get the sequences. You don't know what they did to, to the crops. And it's um, everything that has been filed against Monsanto or any research against Monsanto, even if it's been published, it vanished. All you, all you have is second level information. It is interesting because the hackers haven't understood it yet. Monsanto has. Monsanto tries to prevent uh, a basically hacking scene and full disclosure debate to even start. So, well, maybe we hackers do something important uh, because there's you know regulatory impact, right? There wasn't an agreement, for example. Um, here's again the idea um, of suppressing knowledge. So this is um, the arms trade regulation, the international arms trade regulation, and in the dual use section, um, it. Uh, since 2013, it says, um, you know, there's intrusion software uh, and <laughs> it actually turns out that a very nice, about like 45, 50 year old Japanese um, lawyer lady uh, on the way to dinner at a NATO conference asked me once how I would, uh, you know, define exploits. And um, I told her um, something about, you know, modification of standard execution code flow path, blah, 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 and told her, but it's really stupid to use that as a regulation. You know what? <laughs> um, I think she just took that and put it into the Boston arrangement. <laughs> um, the fun part is, if you've understood a little bit about Turing machines and, and what we talked about here, you know what they managed to do? <laughs> What modifies the standard execution path of a program or process? Your input. <laughs> so basically, user input is a weapon by international regulation. Because, mm, yep, sorry, you didn't understand exactly what you're doing here. <laughs> uh, which is why they're now, um, yeah, um, panically trying to fix that. <laughs> And someone started to, um, I think it was Stefanus and Hero um, who started to explain Turing machines to them. Uh, so basically we have again the same problem, right? Uh, regulation uh, versus the halting problem. Uh, the halting problem tends to win, right? <laughs> so, um, the, the, yay, we just made user input illegal globally as a weapon. Hmm. In, in the same thing is, um, so to, you post the question, yeah, how do you tell the cyber readiness of a country? Uh, hello? <laughs> Holding problem? <laughs> you can't test your shit out of broken stuff when you deal with Turing machines or Turing complete machines. It is not possible. In, you, know, the, you can't test something that is provably untestable. Uh, you can certify it, that's called common criteria, um, but that doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, bottom line, halting problem people. So for the MBAs, um, the, you know, master of business annihilation, uh, you don't know, right? Um, you can't certify it. So what we're trying to say is, get real guys and have fun with that because your work matters and your answers need to live up to it and inspire other people. Thank you very much. Thank you.